the Summit Clash Beginner's Guide is finally here, so make sure you watch the whole video and pay attention. Let's go. Yeah, what's going on here at Clash Call? Welcome back to a brand new video. Yes, the Summit Clash Beginner Guide. Let's go. So first things first, go to Union and go to Summit's Clash. Here we go. As of the recording of this video, we are in Season 3 with 21 hours to go. Oh, man, I cannot wait because we're going to crush Season 3. So first things first, what is Summit Clash? For starters, Summit Clash simply is a PvP mode where it's Union versus Union versus Union versus union four unions are going at it and all you really have to do is have good communication with your union and of course capture all of these fortresses however all these fortresses give different amount of points per two hours yes per two hours okay so you know you have c fortresses you got grade b fortresses you got a grade a fortresses and then you have the s1 fortress which gives you a ton of points per two hours okay also, you have the Sun Castle, Moon Castle, Star Castle, and Sky Castle. That gives your union a buff in damage reduction or armor penetration, HP, or attack. And it has a 24-hour countdown, so be very, very careful when you activate it. It only, it only requires 10 people to activate it, so just saying, okay? Or 10 teams. 10 teams. Yeah, there we go. So, moving on to schedule, we have... Kind of a pointless calendar because it only goes it only shows the week you're in so hopefully they update that in 2024 so it shows a whole month or a whole maybe three months or something that'd be pretty cool now moving on to the guide the good stuff the juice the tea here we go so when it comes to attacking you get three electrical charges which symbolizes three attacks per team and you have six teams which is 18 attacks right however every eight hours it recharges which means you don't want to waste any just saying so every eight hours just saying <laughs> however if you get a winning streak of 10 that's the max okay now moving on we have move reinforcements right this fortress is in battle. A reinforcement charge will be consumed, recovers every 12 hours. This pretty much says, hey, if your fortress is under attack, you're able to click that button and bring up other team members from your union to help out. It's kind of effective. It's kind of not effective. I haven't been in a scenario where it's like, oh, yes, I reinforced this fortress and we're good to go now. Just maybe because it's only been one season. So I'll update y'all in the future on it. But as of right now, I think it's a good perk. But... I don't know. <laughs> Moving on to the next we have is defense morale. This is what makes free to play pairs so valuable. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's all pay to win and everyone who has pay to win artifacts can dominate. You're right. However, right here, this right here, if all the free to play players work together, people like me are kind of screwed. Just saying. Here's why. <laughs> when morale drops to zero, the team automatically retreats to their base. Morale will be fully recovered once the team returns to the base, okay? Which means if you attack my main team, my Phoenix team, six different times, then that team, my team, goes back to the base, which means that Fortress is now missing my Phoenix team. And if I'm snoozing or having dinner or taking a nice hot shower or something, well, guess what? I'm going to miss out. <laughs> yeah. So this is what makes free to play players so valuable. Okay. And I'm happy Hero Clash did this because it allows PVP players to shine. And it also allows free to play players to shine as well. And it literally takes communication and teamwork. Okay. Now, one thing I do want to add is union communication. Yes. I think union communication is the biggest goal the biggest secret when it comes to winning this because if you don't have communication with your union you're probably gonna lose it doesn't matter how much power you have it doesn't matter if you're oh, 80 million cp with 10 abyss artifacts and you know messed up runes <laughs> messed up runes <laughs> so communication is key and i recommend a third party app i know half of my union currently over half 
<laughs> Over half my union has the third party app, Facebook Messenger, and some unions have Discord. Now moving on to the classification of each player. Now this is very, very important when it comes to Summit Clash. When it comes to each player, you have a role. I kind of look at it as a game of chess. You have your king, you got your queen, you have the little horsey thingy, you got the little bishop thingies, and you got the pawns. Everyone plays a very specific role, and just have to be honest, you have to know your role. You're not gonna go in with 30 million CP and dominate a fortress when there's someone with 70 to 80 million CP on the opposite team. This is why teamwork is key, okay? So when it comes to the classification of each player, pretty much the commander, AKA usually the union president or anyone in a union who just has full on knowledge and wisdom of the type of game mode will dictate what someone does. Not saying you have to do this or we're gonna kick you. No, 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 we're just saying, hey, we recommend you do this, this, and that because that will benefit the union the most. Heck, if one of my members told me like, hey, Trin, I need your Olilo over here. And I see that it mathematically works out like, okay, sure, sure. <laughs> good thinking, good stuff, you know? It all comes down to respect and teamwork, okay? Now moving on to teams and when it comes to building teams, let me just put on a different screen for y'all. There we go. When it comes to building teams, it's, oh man, this is very, very specific. I made the fatal mistake of dividing up my two strongest teams into my three to four strongest teams. That was a terrible mistake in season two. It is what it is, lesson learned. However, what you're gonna wanna do is for your first team, you're gonna wanna make it super OP. I'm talking super duper OP where the average person cannot touch it. The high C people cannot touch it. And that for me would be my Phoenix, right? Now, when it comes to the second best team, you're gonna want this kind of the same effect, right? You're gonna have a super high CP team that's strategized in the correct way. Now, I can't reveal too much because then my strategy will be ruined and I want my enemies to see my strategy. However, I have two main teams that decimate, destroy, eradicate, and I cannot wait. Even in the Crucible, no one can beat this team! <laughs> With that being said, your third team, now this is going to be a surprise to everyone, and I'll give you all some intel on this. Your third team is going to consist of, yep, the one and only. Face the power of a true dragon. Yes, Dragon, like I'm trying to tell you, based on my math, based on what I've seen in Season 2, my Dragonic class by itself, mixing with just five support heroes supporting Dragonic, absolutely shreds i cannot believe how good this is because dragonic is so op and dragonic will wipe out anyone's team four team five teams i see my dragonic class beat 10 teams and get kicked because you get that 10 win max and I, i'm like oh my god and dragonic's by himself just shredding as long as you have the spear song necklace and a good setup you're good to go hands down okay so, yes, Team 3 is going to consist of Dragonic with 5 support heroes. Usually, the support heroes will increase his damage reduction or his attack or HP. One of the three. <laughs> one of the three, okay? Now, don't worry about speed. Now, moving on to the Team 4, 5, and 6. Yes, it's going to be factionalized. As in, I highly recommend putting Team 4, 5, and 6 of the same factions. Team 4 will be Tree Spirit, Team 5 could be Nightfall, and then Team 6 could be, you know, Beast Skin or Human, or uh, you can mix it a little bit. It's it's up to you. However, I recommend getting that, that I recommend getting that faction bonus only if it benefits you. Now, if, if you have just straight up crummy ni Nightfall heroes, then don't put them on the team. However, when it comes to Team 4, 5, and 6, you're gonna have a lot of crummy heroes left. It's just how it is, okay? Now, here we go. The biggest thing is how to take advantage of Summit Clash. Yes, it comes down, yep, movement. The secret in this game mode is movement off the bat. When that timer hits zero, when the pistol says go, bow, that means you need to start. Unfortunately, for some of y'all around the world, it starts when you're sleeping. That's unfortunate. Luckily for me, it starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time zone, so I'm good to go. I'm sitting in my nice comfy chair like, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> hey honk, hey honk. So I recommend starting right when you can and go from there. Now when it comes to movement throughout the game, the goal is to move around the map, capture fortresses with the least amount of force. Yes, there's no need to send in your best team to capture a C fortress or a B fortress unless it's a necessity, unless it's a necessity. So that is the secret. 
the most amount of movement with the least amount of force is the secret. And honestly, I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna say it a hundred more times. Communication with your union is key. Lastly, going back to the summit clash, one thing I wanna focus on is one mistake my union made because we didn't know the rules. When it comes to the special summit treasure, we almost cost a union. Where's it at? We almost cost a union free rewards. Okay, now when it comes to the summit treasure, throughout the game, you're going to have two fortresses pop up with a countdown. One will be 12 hours, one will be 24 hours. And pretty much when you capture that fortress, whoever holds that fortress at the end of the countdown will receive the bonus reward. However, in the rules, it states that only one union can claim one of them. So I 100% re I recommend claiming the first one and getting back to S1 or whatever your strategy is. The second one is good to go after if you didn't get the first one though, because these rewards are huge, just saying, okay? Now, what we messed up was we went after both of them not knowing that if we would have captured the second one, because we already captured the first one, we would have cost one of the unions, you know, free rewards when no one would have got the rewards because we already claimed one. So it's good to know. So pass the message on. Okay. Now with that being said, I think that's about it. Hands down. This is just the beginner's guide. And when it comes to your union talk, you know, I'm pretty sure there's some pros from other games and other type of strategy events and to create the best strategy and have fun. The biggest thing here, communication and have fun. Okay. So with that being said, I will see y'all in the next video. Greatness. Mythic. Mythic plus elite.